A Thanksgiving feast can lead to this? Happy Thanksgiving from my family to yours, and I'm gonna do a special Thanksgiving case study. We have a 60-year-old man who was brought in by EMS after being found unresponsive after Thanksgiving dinner. He has no significant past medical history, but doesn't really go to the doctor. He enjoyed a large family feast at Thanksgiving and then sat in the recliner. He did complain of a headache, but then he told his family he's just gonna take a nap. After napping for over two hours, his family noticed that he wouldn't wake up. So they called EMS and he presented to the ER. Upon presentation to the emergency department, he was found to be a GCS of nine and was moving his right side, but not his left. A stroke code was called in the emergency department and here are the results of his emergency CT scan. So what's the diagnosis and what procedures should be performed as soon as possible that could potentially save this patient's life? What medical condition did he have that he likely didn't even know that he had that led to this condition? Stay tuned tomorrow and I'll go through the whole case. Happy Thanksgiving. Is this a food coma or a real coma? Yesterday I presented the case of a 60 year old man who complained of a headache after eating his Thanksgiving dinner. He went to go take a nap and then he couldn't be awoken by his family members a few hours later. He was a GCS of nine upon arrival to the emergency department and had these findings on CAT scan. He was able to move his right side, but not his left side. So what we're seeing on this CAT scan is a basal ganglia hemorrhage or a bleeding type of stroke. This is actually one of the most common types of stroke in a patient with hypertension or high blood pressure. There's a reason why we call hypertension the silent killer. It's because patients often have no idea that they have this diagnosis. Here's a picture that shows the most common regions of the brain that suffer from intracerebral hemorrhage or a bleeding stroke. The basal ganglia is right here and it's caused due to these lenticular striate vessels or these tiny little blood vessels that go into the basal ganglia. That part of our brain is incredibly important in our motor function or our movement. So a stroke on the right side will affect the movement on the left side. When the pressure in our blood vessels gets too high, it pumps that same blood pressure to the brain and that can cause a blood vessel to rupture, causing bleeding within the brain. And that my friends is a stroke. All right, but then what the heck is all this other white stuff throughout the brain? That's actually bleeding into the ventricular system of the brain or the area where spinal fluid bathes the brain. Since the basal ganglia lies right next to the ventricle, it can often go through the path of least resistance and then bleeding can actually drain into the ventricles. Bleeding into the ventricles disrupts the way that fluid flows within the brain and can actually increase the pressure inside of the brain. So the emergency treatment that I asked about is actually alleviating pressure in this patient's brain. How do we do that? A neurosurgeon can perform a life-saving procedure called an external ventricular drain, where basically we place a tube into the ventricle space of the brain and drain that blood, thus alleviating the pressure. We would then be able to monitor the patient's pressure very closely and treat it appropriately with medications. This type of bleed is often not a procedure that we perform actual brain surgery on. We would want to do additional studies once the patient is stabilized, usually a CTA, in order to rule out some type of vascular malformation or another reason why the patient may have had this type of stroke. We would also want to treat his blood pressure very carefully. In this patient's case, all other studies were negative and it was deemed to be a hypertensive stroke and the patient had no idea that he actually had high blood pressure. Over a period of a few weeks, we were able to wean the drain from the patient's brain and he was able to recover from this type of stroke. He did suffer some long-term weakness on that left side. The learning point from this video is to make sure that you go get your annual checkups with your doctor so we can evaluate things that you may not know you have, such as hypertension. I'll see you guys on Sunday for another case.